Welcome to A View to a Grill. I'm Johnny. Today I'm going to show you my low and slow setup and show you how to control your temperature on the Golden's Cast Iron Kamado. For this video I will be smoking a brisket but this is not about the brisket. It's strictly about the setup and temperature control. But saying that I do think it is important that we talk about brisket selection because brisket selection is going to affect the airflow in the Kamado. So let's just talk about that for a second. I think for this cooker, the best brisket is going to be between 12 and 16 pounds. Now this one is a little over 16 pounds and I did have to trim a little more off of the flat than I wanted to, to get it to fit properly. This was the smallest one that they had and sometimes you're gonna to have to go with that. Now, the reason why I like a smaller brisket for the Golden's Cast Iron Kamado is because you want it to fit on there easily. Notice that once I have this brisket on the Kamado, it fits perfectly right above my drip pan. It's small enough not to affect the airflow in the Kamado. When I'm doing a long cook, I like to get started the day before the cook. Anything over six hours, pork butt, brisket, dino ribs. I'm going to set up everything the day before. I have my brisket all trimmed up and in the refrigerator. Now let's go set up the Golden's Cast Iron Kamado. Now to do that I have to remove everything out of the Kamado to get the charcoal in. If you have any charcoal from the cook before just kind of move it around knock off that old ash so that you can use it for this cook. You're also going to want to go ahead and clean out any ash underneath the fire pot of the Kamado. Now at the bottom of the Kamado, I like to start off by putting some of the larger pieces of lump at the bottom. And I feel like this helps with the uh, airflow in the Kamado. I think this is going to bring in air from the bottom vent a little better than if all of the lump was packed tight together at the bottom of the Kamado. And now let's go ahead and fill in the firebox about halfway. Now, once I have it filled in about halfway, I'll go ahead and put in several chunks of my favorite hardwood. And now I'll just finish filling up the firebox. Now, once I have it filled up, I'm going to create a small hole right in the center of that pile of charcoal. Now you can start the fire right in the uh, Kamado, but I like to use a chimney starter. So I'm going to fill in my chimney starter by at least a third, no more than halfway. Now, since it's humid outside and this is the day before, I'm going to get that chimney starter into my barbecue closet just so that we can avoid humidity and that morning dew that kind of forms on everything here on the Gulf Coast. This was a 20 pound bag of charcoal and at the bottom of my charcoal you can see that there's still some lump in there. All 20 pounds would have fit in the firebox if I didn't already have that leftover charcoal in there. Now I'll get all the pieces of the Kamado back into the Kamado and I just want to keep that humidity out of the Kamado. Now let's take a second to talk about the drip pan that we're also going to use the next day. For me this drip pan is the perfect size when I'm smoking a brisket. It's not so big that it's going to really affect the airflow in the Kamado. If you notice both sides are still open and notice at the bottom it doesn't affect the gap between the firebox and the sear plate. Also at the top there's still that gap that's showing between the sear plate and the firebox. This one measures about 11 by 16, but uh, I think the actual measurements are smaller than that because I think it goes by the bottom of the pan. Now this drip pan is going to go on the first tier of grates for our setup. Another reason I like this size of drip pan. If for any reason you need to remove it, you can easily reach in there with a pair of pliers and just kind of maneuver it out of the uh, grates without having to take out any of the grates. So now let's get everything closed up. Let's make sure the bottom vent is closed and the top vent is closed and I want to keep any humidity out of the cooker. All right, so now it is 6 a.m. the next day the day of the cook. Now the first thing I'm going to do after I get out of the bed is go to the refrigerator and set the protein on the counter. Next I'll go outside and start up the chimney starter. 
while the chimney starter is getting started I'll take all the components back out of the Kamado. Now once the coal in the chimney starter is ashed over I'll just pour it right into that hole that we made yesterday. I'll move it around a little bit just so that it won't interfere with sear plate. Now we'll put the Kamado back together. I'll leave one side open while I get my drip pan on the first tier of grates and then I'll put that last grate on. Once we have that set up we're going to put in our ambient temperature thermometer. I will be using the Thermalworks signals. The Thermalworks signals is for me it's great for long cooks. You can document your cook in that uh, application for the thermometer. It also shows a nice graph for the duration of your cook. It's Wi-Fi. It's got all the bells and whistles and for a guy like me that is just interested in all the things that happen during a barbecue it's perfect because it's just another barbecue toy to uh, play with. If you want one of these for yourself, check out the link below. Now let's get the lid closed and start bringing the Kamado up to temp. I'll just start up my Thermalworks Signals app and as you can see it is 59.1 degrees inside of the Kamado, 57 degrees outside. The bottom temperature is going to be the internal temperature of the brisket and I have not plugged that in yet. Today our target temperature is going to be 280 degrees. I'll get the bottom vent wide open and the top vent at least over halfway open. And now we're just going to watch our temperature come up. You know, I'll play around. I'll enter in the conditions in the uh, Thermalworks notes section. You can use it as a reference for your next cook. I like to make my first vent adjustment at 60 degrees below our target temperature. Now my ambient temperature has reached 220 degrees, which is 60 degrees below my target temperature. So I'll make my first vent adjustment. All that is, is closing the bottom vent by half. And the top vent, we're just gonna leave that alone. Just take a look at this smoke that's coming out. All of this is terrible smoke. It's gonna make your food taste bad. So at this point, we have not put our protein in the Kamado. Now I'll be making temperature adjustments at 10 degree increments. Our next temperature adjustment will be at 230 degrees. For that adjustment, we'll just close the bottom vent by half again. The top vent, we're just gonna leave that one alone. Our next temperature adjustment will be at 240 degrees. Again, we'll close our bottom vent by half. We're gonna leave the top vent just the way it is. Now, check out the smoke. You can visually see that it is getting clearer, but we're still not there yet. That smoke is still bad. You still don't wanna put your protein down. Now we're at 250 degrees. We're going to adjust our bottom vent by closing it a half again. The top vent, we're still just going to leave that alone. Now at 260 degrees, I'm going to make my first adjustment to the top vent and I'm going to set that vent to be halfway open. And the bottom vent is still right where we left it. At 270 degrees, I'm going to make my second adjustment to the top vent and I'll close it by half and the bottom vent right where we left it. At this time, I'm also going to finally bring my brisket outside to get it ready to go on the Kamado. Now at 280 degrees, I'm gonna start fine tuning this thing and I'm going to close the bottom vent by half. And notice this time I'm doing it with my pliers because I find it easier to control these smaller uh, vent adjustments by tapping the pliers on the uh, little tab on the vents. It just gives me better control than if I were to try to do this with my fingers. Now I'm gonna leave the top vent just like it is and you can see that the smoke is now that has that blue tint to it or clear and that's what we want uh, for our smoke. Now we'll get the brisket on and you can see that the brisket fits perfectly over my drip pan. Uh, if it didn't fit perfectly over my drip pan, it'll miss the drip pan and hit the sear plate. If it hits the sear plate, the oils and juices are going to burn. It's going to give your food a nasty, funky flavor. And not only that, it's going to create this thick, tar substance on your sear plate. So that's why it's important to have a drip pan big enough 
to catch all your drippings of whatever it is you're cooking. Also at this point, I'm going to go ahead and insert the internal temp thermometer for the brisket. And now let's just close the lid and let this thing start cooking. And now I wanna go over some of the data we've been collecting uh, so far in this cook. Now it's 828 and so far it's taken us about an hour to get the Kamado up to temp and the smoke cleared. And then it's taken us another hour for the temperature in the Kamado to recover. Take a look at this. At about 735, we reached our target temperature. And then at about 736, we went ahead and put our brisket on. And the blue line is the internal temperature of the brisket. Here's where you're going to have to show patience, right? As long as the temperature is on an incline, leave the vents alone. You're going to be tempted to open them up to increase that airflow but you've just worked a whole hour to get them set to where they actually need to be so as long as you see an incline leave the vents alone it may take a while for it to get back up to temp but remember you just put a 35 degree brisket into that cooker so you need to let the kamado recover from that new variable that you introduced into the cooker. I wanna point out this little dip. So you're watching your temperature, it's going up, and then you come to this point where there's a little dip. Right here, the temperature decreased by about a degree. You may feel tempted to adjust your vent. Give it about five minutes to see if it recovers on its own. Now here's where our patience is paying off. Without having to make any adjustments, it recovered on its own and we're back on the incline. Once you start chasing that perfect temperature, you're gonna be chasing it all day because for temperature control, things don't happen on a dime. It'll take 10 to 15 minutes before you start seeing the results of your last adjustment. Now we're at 275 degrees, so I wanna slow down the rate of that incline. I'll grab my pliers and make the tiniest micro adjustment. I'm literally closing this vent by a 16th of an inch. That's it, that's all I need at this point because it's not open very wide to begin with. And now at 281 degrees, we have reached our target temperature and I wanna slow down the incline again. We have such a small opening at the bottom vent. I'm going to now close the screen of the bottom vent and that'll slow down the intake of air just a little bit more, but that's what I'm going for, just a tiny bit more. And if you take a close look at how closed off this bottom vent is, it's probably one eighth of an inch open at this point with the screen shut. So you can see how little air it takes to heat up this really large Kamado. It's, it's amazing to me. The top vent is still right where we left it. Now, at this point, this is all temperature fluctuation. You can see by our graph, we got as high as about 285 degrees, which is only five degrees above our target temperature. But we did get as low as 269 degrees, which is one degree out of our target range. So since we fell out of our target range, I decided to make a small micro adjustment to the bottom vent to increase the intake airflow. I just used my pliers and literally dialed it in. And a few minutes later, we are back on the incline, but we are also three hours into our cook. I'm going to be spritzing every hour for the next four hours. Now let's take a look at our graph and you can see every time I open the lid to spritz the brisket. So the first three humps is the Kamado recovering on its own after I closed the lid. I didn't make any temperature adjustments, but you can also see with each of those humps, it recovered a little less every time. So at this fourth dip that I have circled, I decided to open our bottom vent just a little bit more. And I also opened the top vent just a little bit more, just to increase airflow. That's going to help our Kamado recover just a little bit faster. Now you also see that the temperature of the brisket fell. And that's because during one of the times I was spritzing, I must have accidentally hit 
the thermometer and pulled it out a little bit. So I just pushed it back in and that's why you see the temperature falling on the brisket. Now even though I opened the top vent and the bottom vent just a little bit, the temperature never did fully recover, but that's okay because I knew I was going to wrap the brisket the next time I opened the lid anyway, until I wrapped the brisket, which is represented by this last dip right here. So I will go ahead and take the brisket off, get it all wrapped up and put it back on the Kamado. Just so that we can cook this brisket a little bit faster, I'm going to crank up the heat our new target temperature is going to be 295 degrees. Now to get that temperature up, we're going to have to be a little bit more aggressive. I'll open the bottom vent to about an inch. I'll leave the screen shut, but at least have that main door open to about an inch. And I'll also open the top vent to about a third. When we get to about 270 degrees, I'll start slowing down the uh, rate of the temperature increasing by closing the bottom vent by half. Top vent, I'm gonna leave that right where it was. So at 280 degrees, I'll go back and close the bottom vent by half again. In the top vent, we're just gonna leave that alone. Now normally at 290, I would have made another vent adjustment but the rate of increase was so slow that I decided to wait to 295 degrees. Once we hit 295 degrees, I decided to close the bottom vent again by half. The top vent is still right where we left it. So we got up to 298 and I'm thinking we're looking pretty good. So I'm gonna let this ride a while. Just enjoy the weather and watch some YouTube. At this point, the temperature was stuck. I didn't make any more vent adjustments. Let's take a look at the graph. Now you can see here, we got as high as 308 degrees. But again, we were patient. Had this gotten to 310, I would have started making adjustments again. But we're patient and the Kamado recovered on its own. So from about 242 to 455, what is that, about two and a half hours, it was now time to check for tenderness on the brisket. So now we checked it. It still needed to go a little bit longer and that's where you see the graph kind of going crazy and whatnot. But from that point, every 15 minutes I checked on it, ended up pulling the brisket off at about 202. So at that point, I pulled the brisket out, put it in my chill chest to rest, cut these little slits in the foil so it would be well vented. Now I usually leave the thermometer in the brisket because I like the temperature of the brisket to get back down to about 165 degrees before I cut into it. Wow, that's a detailed video. Man, I wanna say that I am having a lot of fun with the Golden's Cast Iron Kamado. And if you wanna see more videos like this, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Thank you for watching A View to a Grill. I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care, y'all.